Thank you. So I want you to remember three things from this talk. One, this is a very common disease and it occurs in most malignancies. Two, we should be using bisphosphonates in the emergency department and I'll tell you why. And then lastly, we'll touch on dialysis indications. So you don't need to know the slide, but this is an overview of calcium metabolism in your body. On the top, you have calcitonin, which decreases your calcium level secreted by the thyroid. And on the bottom, you have parathyroid hormone secreted by the parathyroid gland, which increases your serum calcium levels via vitamin D mainly. So I want to give you a few numbers to make this more relevant for you. 25% of all cancer patients will develop this disease. And 50% will actually die within one month of diagnosis, if that's not scary enough. And what we do in the emergency department is only temporary. You actually need to treat the underlying malignancy to treat this disease. So this is a review study of all patients admitted to one hospital with elevated calcium levels. And I want you to realize that malignancy is pretty dominant in all three categories. So let's talk about the causes. So you have PTH-related protein, and this is the dominant player in this game. It's responsible for 80% of this disease. And it's not actually PTH, but it's PTH-related protein and can actually bond to the PTH receptor. You have local bony metastasis. This is responsible for about the remaining 20% of this disease. And the big two players here are obviously breast, prostate, and you can also have multiple myeloma. This is about 20% again. You can have lymphomas they can directly secrete vitamin D. And then lastly, you can have parathyroid cancers. They actually will secrete parathyroid hormone. However, the last two that I mentioned is only responsible for about 1%. So in medical school, we learned that patients present with bony pain, so bones, kidney stones, abdominal groans, and psychiatric moans or complaints. But in reality, the hallmark of this disease is dehydration. Your patient has an underlying comorbidity that decreases their oral intake, and then they have an elevated calcium level, which makes them have an increased diuresis. So overall, they present with dehydration. What should you order in the emergency department? So you should start with a complete metabolic panel, right? You should check their electrolytes and renal function. You should send a calcium level. This includes a total calcium, but also an ionized calcium, remembering that the ionized form is the active component and causes your patient's symptoms. You should know that there's a corrected calcium formula. You don't need to know it off the top of your head. You can Google many websites that will give you that number after you input the information. You should help your consultants out. PTH studies should be sent, and also a PTH-related protein, neither of which will come back in the emergency department, neither of which we will act on as they're both send outs. However, your consultants need them, so help them out by sending them downstairs. You're gonna order an EKG. We learned that short QT is the hallmark on the EKG finding, but they can present with bradydysrhythmias, wide QRS, wide PR. So let's talk about treatment, which is really what we care about for your patient. You're gonna give aggressive fluid hydration. And what I mean by that is multiple boluses of normal saline. You're gonna target a urinary output of 100 to 200 cc's per hour. Once they're euvolemic, then you can give them a diuretic, such as Lasix. But make sure your diuretic will excrete calcium with it. Chelation is really the backbone of treatment in this case. Bisphosphonates are the gold standard and they're superior to all other treatments and 60 to 90% of patients will obtain a normal calcium level with one week of starting them. Calcitonin can also be used, but it's temporary. It only lasts for about a week, but it will lower the calcium level by approximately 1.0. If your patient has a lymphoma, you should con consider giving steroids. It will decrease the activity of the vitamin D. You should give bisphosphonates in your emergency department. You need to realize that they take three to four days to become active and fully work, so help your patient out by starting them early. So lastly, let's talk about dialysis indications. If your calcium, levels less than 18, or calcium level is greater than 18 or your GFR is less than 18, you're gonna wanna dialyze your patient. If your patient has heart failure, they obviously can't deal with the amount of fluids they're gonna require. We're talking about multiple boluses of normal saline, 
a heart failure patient cannot deal with that amount of fluid, they will need dialysis. Lastly, if your patient presents with a seizure or a focal neurologic deficit, this is another reason to dialyze your, dialyze your patient in the emergency department. So we went over a few things today. We went over that this is a common disease that we, don't, what we see quite frequently. We talked about fluids and bisphosphonates are the standard treatment that we should be giving in the emergency department. And then lastly, we touched on dialysis indications. Thank you very much.